Right, this is Sheila on the 5th of January 2009. I'm going to play a live audio that I did during June of 2008 when I was touring Dorset in search of my granddaughter's ancestors and also of their grandmother Sandy and their father of course Melvin. Um, so this is part two where I'm off now to the cemetery on the outskirts of Sturminster Newton and um, where you know I'm just scanning for graves because you never know when they might come in useful they're always good for a reference and you do learn a lot about um, people and events from gravestones so, you know they're a good historic record sad that they're destroying so many of them though and um, what I did find when I was there was a lot of metal crosses small metal crosses with a round circle which once um, had um, names inscribed on them um, whether this was to replace actual gravestones or whether it was just what they did in the cemetery I'm not sure but anyway here we go with the live recording the 31st of June 2008 and I've just been looking around Sturminster Newton Church of St Mary never found anything significant there but I thought I'd come and view it anyway um, and then I'm now going off to Blamford Forum because I never really stopped to look around that properly so I thought while well, I got the chance I'll go and do that so I'll be back shortly Right, this is weird uh, As I was leaving Sturminster Newton I decided to pull into a garage to get some petrol but it happened to be a non-petrol garage they sell used cars and anyway, something caught my eyes had come out and it was the Sturminster Newton Town Council Cemetery uh, probably sort of diagonal across to the garage. So there's a cemetery I found the Newton, still in the Newton cemetery that I was on about. So I'm going to investigate now. If I hadn't gone into that garage, I would have driven straight past it. I didn't know I had the tape on at this point. Yeah. It's me taking photos, I'm aware the tape's on. That's all the noisy lorries. This is a busy road I'm on now, going from Sugarbourne to Bromford. As you come in, and on the left, there's lots of little tiny metal crosses, lots of them, um, with plot numbers on, like 173, 189. There's one gravestone of a Phoebe Ann Bennett of Puxley, Sturminson Newton, who died 1918 to 74. The rest are all, they've just got numbers on them, they're all, loads of them, there must be a couple hundred or more, or at least a couple hundred, and they all go on the tree as well. And they're just all numbered. And that's all, I mean, they might have a name on them. They're faded though. Yeah, there's one in loving memory of somebody, Phillips. Yeah, maybe they were hard up. Uh, in fact, looking at the cemetery, there's more of them. It must be a cheap way of doing things. It looks like a big cemetery. Well, I find it. You never know, I might find a relation. Well, actually, I've 
worked on a job ride out who died 1894 age 79 and Mr. Holder, his wife, who died October the 8th, 1897, age 80. Remembering that ride outs are a part of the family. And who have we got here? Because the thing is, this graveyard has probably been used for the outlying villages of Sturmitz and Newton as well. But these, what the problem we've got here, I'll take a picture in a minute. All we've got is these metal crosses with a number on. And no name. That's what but maybe they had stones once, and what they do now, when the stones are damaged, they just shove a metal cross down. And that's a way of recording who it is. So it's a recording of a type. Okay, well I'm just going to have a look around. So that's a job cried out. With a little tiny chapel in the background. What I'll do, I'm going to try and take a picture and pick up some of these crosses. With Bob right out, a large stone, and it been between two crosses. That's the picture. And this will also illustrate some of the crosses that you will be picked up from this photo to show what I mean. Anyway, I'm going around now gently. Just a reminder, I'm at Sturminster Newton's Town Council Cemetery on the outskirts of Sturminster Newton off the main Sherborne to um, Turned up. That's weird. I wasn't looking for it. I said I won't go look for it. There's quite a large one in front of the um, side of the chapel of, of uh, Edward Strange. Strange seems to be a common name. 1805 to 1876, and Thomas and his wife, 1806 to 1886. And that's quite a nice large stone. There's also Sarah Ann, who died age 52. Um, and also a Frank, their youngest son, who died in 1897. He was 52, I mean. Sarah Ann was... Um, she died in 19... I think it's 01, aged 72. And that's a large rectangular surround with metal railings, plus loads of those metal crosses, small metal crosses, all numbered inside that. See, the thing is, this day, with um, cemetery maintenance, they don't actually, they prefer not to have any graves, so it's easier to cut the grass, see? Eh? So they just put all these metal spikes in the ground. Loads of them. Loads and loads of them. Strange way of doing things. There's a Harry George, son of Edward Charlotte Duffett. Edward and Charlotte Duffett, and also Edward Duffett of Fox Farm, who died 1905, aged 70 something. And Charlotte, um, she died 1909, aged could be 70. That's right in front of the porch on the left hand side as you go up to the porch of the chapel. I'm just going to go in these bushes and see if I can see anybody. Joseph Rose, let's say the name Rose seems to be quite common. And then under this great big tree there's lots of these little, little spikes and there's um, a very strange name, Bathina, the beloved widow of William Rideout, which part of this life, September the 11th, 1893, age 84, that's a, that's a, a larger metal memorial thing. Um, and her name is Bathina, wife of William Rideout. I'll have to look that up in the census because that's an unusual name. And well, they would have been born at the beginning of the 18th century. 
I want to take a picture of that, but because it's very dark under the tree, I've decided to leave it. I actually found a photo of that grave, which I shall include, um, some which someone else had taken. I can't remember who off, off the top of my head, but I did actually find a photo of that unusual large metal cross. Right, this will continue on part three of Sheila's visit to Sturminster Newton in 2008.